Hello everybody, this is me, it's 358 here, and we're here for the season finale at Zen Joltus of the Iron Girl Grinch Arca Series. Man, what the seasons have been, with all the winners, all the people who took place, and you know, where the tracks we went to and stuff. Once again, I want to thank everyone who signed up, and Kyle for letting me do this. He's a great guy, and uh, hopefully you, can, you guys can slide them NASCAR 48 WW tube off and stuff. Great guy, you know, he runs some good series and stuff, so it'd be good awesome for some support. So let's show you the uh, top ten and the rest of the starting lineup. On the polls, Dustin Ray, second Mike Flanagan, third Dylan Young, fourth Cody Delamas, uh, fifth is Kyle Sosnowski, sixth Kyle Thomas, seventh is Charles Sanford, eighth Chris Washer, ninth William Duncan, who played top ten, is Nicholas Garrett, who's the rest of the starting lineup. Let's look at the starting line. I want to mention someone real quick. Dan Coates. I made a huge fail about it. The same Dan Coates who's been kicking ass in the series. Uh, I failed when we added up the points. He has actually clinched the spot for the championship. So Dan Coates is going to be your season one Einar Ogrimmage Arca Series champion. And he was he barely beat out mathematically on Danny Everett, who finished 30th at Darlington. And I bet you he's regretting that that he wrecked out and stuff. But a uh, tough break for Everett, a tough break for uh, Jake Williams and Severin Yashmik, the two other guys uh, besides Everett that could have had a shot, but just couldn't get it done. Which, sorry if I didn't tell you that earlier. I realized that I messed up on the points badly. But in the meantime... We still got a race to do here. The season finale at Zen Joltis. 482 cars trying to end the season with a bang. How would it be for Dean Coates if he actually won this with the championship? It would be huge. But others, they're trying to finish their season on the high note. Some good, some bad. Are we going to see the big one? All will be answered. We all, I think if we also saw it earlier, the I-Ray Monster Energy Super Speedway Series one here. Man, oh man. Here we go. Green flag is out at Zen Joltis. Dylan Young going to go on the inside there. Dustin Ray has had a dismal season. He hasn't had the you know a good season there in the 25. Hopefully he'll be in the Outback in the Universal Orlando Cup Series uh, when signups come. Hopefully we'll see him there. There's Kyle Sosnowski, Einarol president there. He's moved along the way, along with three other Einarol members, Charles Sanford and William Duncan. All three of them are uh, you know trying to work together here. But William Duncan is going to get moved to the middle as well as Sanford. Let's look at the whole deal here. Now, if you notice in the path of my Zenjoltis, uh, it's great racing. It really is. Oops. And, um, you know, I think it was the Outback Series. We went seven wide in Season 2. Seven wide and made it work. But I don't know how it's going to be this time, though, with, with Arca and stuff. Because there are different cars, different speeds and stuff. And, you know, anything can happen. But all right, they're, they're doing five wide. And one of that cars there that was doing it was Nicholas Guerra. And now they're going back to four wide. There you go. Where is, uh, oh, there he is, right there. I just got him. There's Everett. I'll tell you something. I think he is so mad that he got wrecked out there. And, you know, it, I think he really wanted to be in the championship hunt badly there. And uh, that's a tough break for the 55 there. And, uh, you know, I think Everett's very disappointed. But, you know, he's been a great, he's a great racer and stuff. And, man, what a season he's had. As actually, look at this who got the lead, Dustin Ray. Dustin Ray held on to that lead there. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, Eugene. Eugene, get out of there. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, Trevor Jackson and Eugene the Max. Goodness me. I tell you what, the Max. Oh, my God. This guy has just had a miserable season here. This guy could not catch a break. He's just been in wreck after wreck after bad finish after bad finish after wreck after wreck. Just couldn't get anything good in that 35 car. I'll tell you one thing. Um, he also had the same in the IRA Monster Energy Super Speedway Series. But the question is this. Once he comes into Outback and maybe even Universal Orlando, what's it going to be for his first full season? Because this year in his full season, he didn't do pretty good at all. He actually did awful. Man, it was a tough race. So hopefully, DeMax can change that around in the 35, um, right now in this 35 car show. That when Because, you know, he came in the uh, top 25 when he raced here in the Outback and you know, he beat uh, Silver Fox in the championship by three points. So, we'll see how the match will do. 
there's Jeffrey Buckeye taking the lead away. Oh. Damn it. I was looking at the spectator cam and I didn't want that. That's all right. And look at Danny Everett. Second in the point. Oh, my God. Six wide they're going. I don't know how it is with my Zen Joltus. It goes six wide and they're making it work. This is insane racing. Oh my god, they're going five, six wide here. Most of this track. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six wide. They're going. Oh my god, they're almost seven wide. We're oh, 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 Ashley LaFlante, Joseph Lombard, and a few others almost experienced the big one right there towards the mid pack and back of the field. They gotta be really careful here. They don't want to cause a mistake there. And look who's moving up. Daniel Humble as Everett is taking the lead. Oh my god. Oh, I might want to wait on that there because oh boy, this is gonna get messy here. Everett is now in the lead. Humble's moving his way up to the lead now. And also he's bringing along Paul Swanson as draft. Oh nope. Now he's gonna move him up. Look at the six walk. Look at the helicopter view here. Oopsie, there we go. Take a look here. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. No, no, no. Don't tell me. Oh, my God. Dan Coates. He's already won the clinch to stop the championship, but he doesn't want to be get wrecked out and stuff. Oh, my God. This is going to get insane. Oh, my God. This is... Some big wreck's going to happen where, like, more... Like, 30-plus is going to get involved. I can guarantee you, because... The way how they're racing, this is only lap three, which they're about ready to hit lap four. Oh, my God. LaPlante is going to lead the lap. Awesome, LaPlante. Also another one of those people who's had a miserable season. He finished dead last in Daytona and just couldn't rebound after. Oh, my God. Seven wide. Seven wide. Here we Oh, no, that's five wide. Okay. Oh, that scared me. Six wide. Oh, my God. This is just insane. This is Zen Joltis for you folks. Zen Joltis at its finest. This is why it's the track that Enter 2003 has talked about. Just look at the racing they are doing. This is unreal. Just packed up with each other. And just unbelievable how they're racing. LaPlante still hold on in the lead. The outside line where uh, Daniel Humble is, he's trying to help Paul Swanson, or excuse me, Paul Swanson is trying to help Daniel Humble to lead, but Zach Flickinger going to help out there. And look at this who's moving his way up to second, right? Well, he's trying to. Is James Qualls in the 91, who was a championship contender uh, at Darlington, had a lot of trouble. And I'll tell you one thing, he felt disappointed there. But right now, he's trying to get his first ever win. He he, he had a few times where he could have won. He won it. He should have. He could have won in Atlanta, but just couldn't get Oh, the caution's out. Oh, there's a wreck. And I see Bucket. Oh, it's a Max involved. Oh, my God. The Max, once again, just. Can't catch a break. Buckeye involved. Leia Walker. Severin Yashmik. Dustin Ray, the pole sitter. Austin Ogo may have gotten held up. And oh boy, this is the part where we really got to keep an eye on who's going to lead at the stripe. And is there going to be a wreck afterward? LaPlante is going to lead at the line. Oh my god, this is where a wreck could happen right now. Oh my god, this is not good. Uh Wait, we're just double checking. Yes, the leader is Austin LaPlante. Oh my god. And they're actually keeping it going. I am so surprised. Oh man, what a tough break though. Oh, Austin Ogo does have a little bit of front end damage in the DuPont car. Dustin Ray's got side side damage on the left. Seven Yashmik as well. Leia Walker. I think she made it through but got held up. There's the Max. Oh no, Leia Walker's got left side damage too. The Max. Uh, his bumper's a little crunched up and uh, side smash there. And Jeffrey Buckeye also having a tough break. If you hear something, that's my dog. But caution's out. Austin LaPlante leads us down for a small caution, surprisingly. Let's take a look at ourselves the first caution of the race. Well, Demax, just that miserable season. Oh, boy. Leia Walker's going to hook Eugene Demax. Into Dustin Ray. Austin Ogo gets into the Max. Buckeye nowhere to go. Gets into Leia Walker. There's the Max where that bumper gets crushed up. And then Severin Yashmik made it through somewhat. But, you know, I guess he got hit from the side. But uh, just couldn't catch a break in this series. Or the Monster Energy. Just, man, both the series really just been hurting him. So, I guess he's really excited for Outback and, uh, 
University of Orlando. Outback used to bid the championship, and you know, if he signs up for University of Orlando, then this should be interesting with the third, what uh, Demax can do. But I think he's really going to want to forget this season and the uh, bus energy, though. Demax just having a tough break, though. Caution's out for the first time today. Austin LaPlante barely beat James Qualls at the line. Let's take you back to the green. Well, we're back at the halfway mark here as we're in lap 8 of 16. We'll go back to green with eight laps to go. No drivers retired out of the race. Very surprising, but we kept it together, and I think it's going to be most of the field that's going to be able to compete. I don't know about um, Eugene DeMax that, like that there. Anyway, Austin LaPlante is your leader, James Qualls second, Nicholas Gare third, Fritz Lugan your fourth, Cody Long is fifth, William Duncan sixth, Daniel Hummel seventh, Zach Lugan your eighth, Anthony Reese ninth, and complete top ten is Kyle Thomas. 11th through 20th is Chris, Paul Swanson, Chris Washer, Luke Walker, Jacob Lawler, Dan Coates, Tim Walsh, Drew Austin, Justin Townpass, Jerry Garrett, and Danny Everett completes the top 20. 21st through 30th are Hayden Klein, Mason Wood, Mike Flanagan, Daniel Day, Cody Breckham, Kyle Snusky, Austin Geith. Ashley LaPonte, Charles Sanford, and Henry Nova completes the top 30. 31st through 40th are Trevor Jackson, Joseph Lombard, Dylan Ogo, Jake Williams, Dylan Young, Brandon Chan, and then the cars with damage from 37th on back. Austin Ogo, 37th, Jeffrey Buckeye, 38th, Luke Walk Leia Walker, 39th, and Seven Joshman in 40th. He does have a little bit of front end damage, as you can see. And the rest of the field, Eugene Max in 41st, and 42nd, Dustin Ray. As real quickly, I'm going to let my dog in, and uh, I might not be on the commentary for a few seconds here, but bear with me. I'm going to let my dog in. I'm sorry about that, folks. As the green flag is back out. Like I said, eight laps to go. This should be interesting. James Qualls had a great season. The beginning of the season wasn't as well, but towards the towards the middle and the end, he really stepped up, ended up being a championship contender, and he came so close, but he's going to just try to fight off to see if he can get second in points. But, man, James Qualls had a great season, though. It's a shame, though, he's not a championship contender. Neither is anyone else, but... And uh, Leo Walker is actually in the back, and Demax, Dustin Ray, Yashvik. Pretty much, let's just see here. Yeah, all those guys who had damage, they're pretty much screwed. But they'll be ready, though, in case when that big one it happens, just in case if it does happen. And there's Dan Coates, who had a dominant season. I think he did have a win or two. I, I believe he did. Me if I'm wrong, I believe it was um, it wasn't Vegas. I'm trying to think where it was. I, I think it was Atlanta. Or, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Wow, <laughs> memory's failing me. Anyway, there are some cars also still trying to catch up to this pack, and the last of them being Dylan Ogo. But his brother Austin is just not getting up there. He, he just lost the draft. He just can't get up to that 87 bumper. Dylan Young also having a little trouble there with the other guys there. So, it's interesting there. How about, um, let's talk about a few other people. Let's talk about, oh, here's a good one we have to talk about. Tim Walsh. I'll tell you something. You know, he's had an up and down season. You know, Walsh has mostly a down season, but he had a few good ups. You know, he had a good run at Rockingham. He had a few other good runs. And he just, he raced good. Sometimes, and sometimes he didn't, but Walsh um, does come for the Nishiwan Cup, then it should be interesting to see what he can bring there, but um, doesn't, hopefully he'll come back. Hayden Klein, the 49, this is his first time he's ever been in my series. Uh, he's been, uh, he did okay, he did decent, you know, he's, he was in the top 20 in points, and, you know, he hung in there, he just stayed around. Oh, how about another one? How about uh, uh, Dan Coates' friend there, Cody Breckham in the 39. Goodness me, this guy also had a bad season there in the 39. Just couldn't get anything done. Just that guy falling apart throughout the season. Just couldn't get anything done. It was a tough break there. How about the car behind him? Joseph Lombard in the 54. I'll tell you something about Lombard. You know, he made a big presence. And the beginning wasn't as well, but when it came to Texas, man, that guy, 
just had a whale of a run, ended up winning that race, and, you know, it was the first time Joseph Lombard won my race, and, wait a minute, are we, oh, no, oh, okay, we were growing the five wide, thank God, um, and Lombard, like I said, same thing, if he can sign up for the series, then this would be awesome for the Outback and the University of Orlando, so, we'll see, um, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, Daniel Day here. Daniel Day just—he eh, didn't have a, much of a of a season. He just—he had a dismal season. He just tried to get good runs and just couldn't get the job done. And in Las Vegas, he was looking forward to it. That was his home track, and unfortunately, the four car didn't perform well. And uh, it was a tough break. I was hoping he was going to have a good run there. How about Mason Wood in the 33? I'll tell you something. He won at um Kentucky, and. Wood, you know, he had a quiet season. He didn't make much noise or progress. He just really had a quiet season. Not a lot of people, you know, counted on to him, but he did pretty good in the Palm and Art Machine, though, so it was good to see him there. How about the guy who's leading right now, Trevor Jackson, the 79? Uh, Jackson, I, I don't know if he's going to sign up for Nationwide Cup. I, I kind of highly doubt it. You know, he's, he's barely been active on YouTube lately, but um, Trevor, you know, he just hasn't had this good season this uh, white, unsponsored, unsponsored, number 79 car just had a very miserable season there, and he'll want to forget as well. How about, um, uh, wow, Dylan Ogo actually moved way up to the front quickly. How about Jacob Lawler in the, oh, jeez, I can't get to the right car. Oh, there we go. Jacob Lawler in the one there. Jacob Lawler won at, um, uh, wow, I think of, uh, yeah, California. Lawler, you know, he was mostly doing good at the beginning of the season. Then he just fell apart midway of the season, and then towards the end, he tried to make a comeback, and then the win at California really boosted him, and then he just couldn't get the job done. So, Lawler, you know, he's an NRSL member and stuff, and we'll see how he'll do in the uh, um, the Nationwide Cup. So it should be interesting there. Now, I do want to mention Yash McKeer, who's off the pace, but Yashmik, I'll tell you something there with Kyle Sosnowski uh, racing there, or KSM, excuse me, KSM Incorporated. My bad. I, my... Yashmik, you know, he actually was highly doubtful on how he would do. Never raced in NASCAR before, never had any auto racing experience. He ended up winning at Rockingham. Totally surprised everyone. Then later on, became a championship contender. Unfortunately, you know, like I said before, he just he couldn't make it thanks to Dan Coates. But, man, I'll tell you something. Sever and Yashmik made a lot of noise in this series. Maybe if he'll be another series, it'll make some more noise there. But ho hopefully uh, we'll see him in the near future as well. Back up to the front as well. There's Chris Washer. He replaced Stephen Pollard the third in the series uh, due to not commenting in, with the retiring part. And, well, they made a second pack here. That's weird. But, um... Washer, he didn't have a good season when he replaced Pollard the third. Even when Pollard the third was in it, he, he didn't do well. As, didn't do as well. Also, but you know, Pollard the third though, he's gonna make a lot of noise. I can get. Or, wow, I failed. Chris Washer, he's gonna make a lot of noise. There we go. I can't. I can't say anything right. Uh, he's gonna make a lot of noise. I guarantee in the Outback in the University of the Cup series. I have that feeling. I know he's gonna. He's gonna be driving the five in the Cup, and who knows where he'll be driving the Outback. I know he's gonna be driving, but we'll see how he'll do. How about William Milken in the 46? This is also his first time in my series, so, and also an INRL member. William has actually did pretty good this season. You know, he, he came in the top 15 in the standings most of the season. He won at uh, Pocono, and uh, his good buddy Charles Sanford also won as well. Uh, we'll get to him in a moment. But um, w William Milken in the Frank Kimmel car at Vance Auto Parts Ford, he actually had a really good season. And a lot of people, you know, Knowing William Duncan, he could do some noise. He didn't make a lot of noise like he would, like a lot of people expect him to do. But he won a he won a race, so it's a good thing for him. Speaking of high neural members, how about Charles Sanford in the 44? Sanford, you know, you know him from a bunch of series, but Sanford he actually won at um the race after, which I couldn't think of it off the top of my head. Race three, um, uh, uh, memory's failing me. Wow, um, probably come back to me on that. But Sanford, he had the one win, and then just after that. He tried to become a championship contender, did, and then he wrecked out and just couldn't come back after that, and there's a tough break there. How about, um, oh, whoa, holy crap, they're getting racy. As we are on lap 14 and 16, three laps to go. 
Uh, let's talk about a few other drivers. There's uh, Oh, there's Jake Williams. We do want to mention him. Yes, he was the Talladega winner, which, you know, Talladega, always known as an un underdog track, meaning the people who race there normally underdogs are the winners. And I'll tell you something, not a lot of people pointed out Jake Williams as an underdog there, proved them wrong, and won that race. Later on, became championship contender, like I said about before, just couldn't catch up and just lost a chance thanks to that away car. We're getting ready to near two laps to go. Uh, who else are we going to talk about? Austin Geith in the 59. Geith didn't really have a good season. You know, he tried coming back in Talladega and almost won it. Uh, there was a track, I think. It was not Daytona. Um, can I call it? No. I can't remember. It, it was a track when he came so close to winning. But Geith didn't really have that well of a season. He wrecked out a lot as well as uh, DeMax and a few others. But, man, just, he had a tough break there. Um, and this is the first time in, the, in my series for him as well. Drew Austin, the same for him. He didn't have a good season as well. Um, Brandon Chan in the 34 there, you see, uh, who's uh, the person on the inside line. Kyle Thomas, first in my first time he's ever been in my series completely. Uh, they're going about six wide there. Henry Nova in the 21. He didn't have a pleasant season or a dismal season. He just did okay. He just had a Averaging season there, but Nova, you know, still racing. He's hanging in. As they're still racing on here. Jacob Waller taking the lead. Uh, we will talk about. Uh, or actually, now nah, we, we're getting ready to get into the white flag, and this is where crunch time can happen. So I think I better stop talking about drivers there and uh, get ready for the finish here. And real quickly, we'll check. There's Leah Walker. She's on turn. Okay, he's got to turn four, so I doubt they're going to catch up to Leo Walker. But here we go. Coming off a of turn number four, Anthony Reese. Oh, he made a rookie mistake there. He went on the high side to Jacob Law. I doubt he's going to get back on the inside line. But the white flag is waving. For the final time this season, white flag is out at Zinjoltis. Only one wreck took place for now, and they have been keeping it clean, not wrecking each other. They're racing really smart here. And, oh, my God, am I seeing this here. Dan Coates is getting closer to that lead. Oh, my God, imagine if he takes it. Ashley LaPlante, though, she's got to change a plan. She's going for the lead now. Dan Coates, he's getting closer. He brought along Daniel Humble there, who's got the same similar car colors as him. This is really going to help him out. And here comes Cody Breckham also into the picture. He might have a chance. There's still plenty of time left. They're just on the backstretch here. This is where it's going to get good here. Dan Coates, I think he's peaking. I think he's peaking. Yes, he is. Dan Coates going for the lead. Ashley LaPlante has the lead. Dan Coates is going to change it right now. Take the lead. Can Dan Coates, championship winner, win this race with Zen Joltis? Can Daniel Hummel make a move? Can Cody Brecka make a huge run? Here comes Hummel into the fray. Daniel Hummel, can he get the run? Oh, he cannot. Dan Coates puts the block. Cody Lamas needs to help Daniel Hummel if Hummel can win this race. Here we go. Coming up a turn three and coming up a turn number four. Dan Coates, championship winner. No one's going to stop him again. He's going to win here at Zenjoltis. Boy, oh boy. Dan Coates is your winner at Zenjoltis and like season one, I am the World Goodrich Arca Series champion. Dan Coates, just a man at domination, is going to get the job done. And he's and I, from what I've heard from Qualls before, he's going to be added on to the list in the IROC Racing Championships roster in that um, series. So that should be interesting what Dan Coates can do in the 08. Oh, boy, what a race. Woo! Humble will end up second in, his, in this last race of the season. Third is going to, oh wow, uh, fourth belong to Cody Lamas, seventh to William Duncan, eighth Mike Flanagan. Okay, let's look at the thing here. I think this would be better if we uh, looked it here. Oh, and the 26th blew up to a piston. What the hell? That was weird. Dan Coach is your winner. Daniel Humble second. Ashley DePonte third. Fourth is Cody Lamas. Fifth, Cody Breckham. Sixth, Luke Walker. Seventh, William Duncan. Eighth, Mike Flanagan. Ninth, um, the 59 of... Uh, uh, 
Oh, Austin Kite. Wow, I can't believe I do that. It running at the top says Austin Blunte. We'll give you a full look with the names and stuff, but just showing you by number wise. Here it is from 11th through 20th as shown. Find your number and stuff. 21st through 30th. Thirty-first through fortieth, and uh, thirty-five cars were in contention for this win. And then, unfortunately, the last two there, Leia Walker, way behind, just had so much damage. I don't know what happened to Nicholas Guerra there. Uh, we don't know what happened of like how he blew up and stuff, but I think it was uh, during the race and Guerra's engine just decided to blow. I think that was why they split up into two packs there. Um, but yeah, tough break for Nicholas Guerra though. Once again, congrats to Dan Coates on the win and the championship at Zenjoltis and for the season. Congratulations. What a huge win this must be for that young man here. Just an unreal thing, thing what he did there. That rookie is just, well, not a rookie, but you know what I'm trying to say. This, this guy here has done an amazing job, and now he just parts it and no more to the car. The end of the season is complete. And man, what a season has this been. Same for the Irie Mustang Super Speedway Series. What a race that has been. Dan Coates, what a job well done that young man has done. And I believe, from what I know of, uh, that that is Cody Breckham's um, uh, secondary driver. So Cody Breckham is going to be celebrating that as well. And... You know, that is huge. I mean, that's an unbelievable deal. Congratulations once again to Dan Coates on the win one last time and on the championship. A huge deal for the 08. Thank you guys so much here for being here at Zen Joltis. And we'll see you guys for sign-ups for Season 2 of the Intercell, or, wow, Season 3 of the Intercell Outback Series and Season 2 of the Intercell, Intercell Universal Orlando Cup Series. This is 867 Signing off at Zenjoltis, and we'll see you guys for sign up, and then we'll see you at Daytona for those series. Here come the full official results with all the names of the drivers and stuff, and we'll see you guys later. Peace out.